Welcome to this multi-part series on fields in physics. This first episode is what is a field? And throughout this series, we're gonna use visuals, graphs, formulas, and explanations to go through all these concepts, okay? In this field series, the topics that we're gonna cover include uh, fields of force, types of fields, field diagrams, force, strength, energy, and the idea of potential and voltage. In terms of the force fields themselves, we're going to go through gravitational, electrostatic, and magnetic. Okay, let's get started. So, what do you think of when you see this magnificent Liverpool home ground? Or the place where you sow uh, seeds of growth? So, you're probably really thinking, uh, it's got to be a field, hey? Uh, but actually, both these images convey this idea that we should think of when we think of fields, which is space. Uh, space to play football or space to grow your seeds or grow your wheat. So let's define what is a field in terms of physics. Okay, so it's defined as a physical quantity represented by values, magnitude and or direction at each point in space and maybe time. So it's really uh, a diagram showing values of a particular thing uh, at all points in space. Let's go through a few examples. So here we've got Messi and this shows uh, where he might be or how long he's played at every point in space throughout a game. Oh Messi, he's greatest of all time. He's the GOAT. <laughs> Now here is a diagram uh, of the direction and magnitude of the average wind at any point in Australia. You can see it different directions and higher magnitudes down near Tasmania. Here we've got a field diagram of the direction and magnitude of force uh, on a positive charge at any, two, any point in space. So there's some examples. Now, let's go through physics fields. So the different types of fields of force that we're going to deal with, gravitational, electrostatic, and magnetic. Specifically with these three, we're going to look at force fields. So the idea of what is the direction of the force at any point in space. Let's start with gravitational force field. Now we know the idea of gravity acting on mass, uh, objects fall towards the earth, satellites orbit the earth, but this idea uh, that force is always acting, gravity force is always acting towards or between objects, okay? So let's look at these dots here. At each of these points, we can represent vectors as being the direction of force at that point in space. So further out, the vectors are a little bit smaller. Closer in, they're a bit larger because the force is a bit greater. Now, as you know, all the directions of all the forces are towards the center of the Earth, uh, if we're looking at the field due to the Earth, okay? Uh, and so we can represent this as a diagram, the arrows all going in towards the Earth. So that's the field diagram. Now, gravity force acts on mass, or the gravitational force field acts on mass, and it is defined as the force uh, on one kilo of mass or on mass in kilos at any point in space. Okay, now we can think of that Earth diagram there. Thirdly, what we've got here uh, is it's a very weak force. So uh, you need a m bucket load of mass. So something like the Earth or the Sun, uh, the attraction between my partner and myself is not gravitational, uh, but it is uh, a different type of attraction. Uh, so on, along those lines, gravity force uh, is only attraction. Uh, we don't have repulsion, so things don't push away from each other. And finally, we're going to learn about Newton's law of gravitation. Let's look at a fun fact now. This one is a little bit obscure, but it relates to fields, I guess. And the world's biggest farm, which is in China, is over 9 million hectares, over 22 million acres, uh, which is actually pretty much the size of Portugal, so a decently sized European country. Okay, let's get back to uh, force fields. Next, we're going to look at the electrostatic force. Now, we talk about the electrostatic, uh, it's to do with electricity. Uh, static means charges that aren't moving, so static. 
And if we look at this positive charge here, similar to the uh, gravity diagram, the arrows are going all away from the positive charge. Okay, so the force between two positive charges, uh, if we had a positive charge at any point in space, uh, would be pointing outwards. Okay, so we can define how we define electrostatic force fields, and these act on charge. Okay, so if we had a positive charge at any point in space, and specifically it's defined as the force on a positive charge at any point in space. So we know positive and positive repel, so that's why the arrows point outwards. Now, it's a strong force. You only need a really little bit of charge to attract or repel. Uh, and specifically, electrostatics are to do with attraction for opposite charges and repulsion for like charges. So if they're the same, they uh, repel each other. And similar to universal law of gravitation, there is Coulomb's law that we're gonna learn a bit later. Let's now look at magnetic force fields, okay? Now, as you can see, there is a bar magnet here, and these arrows or vectors tell you the direction and magnitude of the force on a north side of a compass. As you can see, the arrows point towards the south end, a north will be attracted to the south, and it will be repelled from the north end of a magnet. So if you were to move a compass all the way around here, you'll get this diagram here. Interestingly, if you put iron filings around a bar magnet, you get this shape here because the iron filings straighten themselves according to these field lines, which is really super interesting. So hopefully you've done that in your physics class. Now, uh, the force, magnetic force acts on north or south poles of a mag magnet and they're defined as the force on a north a pole or the north side of compass at any point in space. Thirdly, uh, that is a strong force as well, the magnetic force, uh, and it could be attraction or repulsion, as similar to electrostatics. And finally, an interesting thing here is that you cannot create a monopole, which is a single point magnetic field. When you cut a magnet in half, you create two magnets, which both have a north and a south end. Note, this video does simplify the magnetic field. In reality, it is very intertwined with the electric field, which uh, is the electromagnetic field, which we'll save for another video. Um, in this series, I'm gonna go through uh, future videos where we will actually look at gravitational versus uh, electrostatic. There are many similarities between the two, uh, and it's an excellent way to learn in terms of learning these two concepts of gravitational and electrostatic in tandem, uh, side by side, as they're very similar. Thanks for watching this first video of this series today. Uh, click to subscribe, um, and I'd, I'd really appreciate that sincerely. Uh, and definitely leave some comments and questions below. And you can look on to the next video as you wish. Cool. See you later.